Hey everybody, Dr. Dave Marquis here and I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about the vagal nerve. I put out another video recently about the autonomic nervous system and I felt it necessary to help you to understand the nerve pathway that you're actually working when you're uh, facilitating or optimizing that autonomic nervous system. I have my computer out here so that I can give you a, a tangible example. Many times we hear uh, the term autonomic nervous system and then the, its subcomponents, the sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system, and you're like overwhelmed. You're like, I'm not a neurologist. I don't know what any of this is. Don't, you know, your brain turns off. Well, it's not that hard. So this right here is a computer that has a hard drive. So if I unscrewed this thing, you could actually pull that hard drive out. It's tangible. I could touch it. It runs on an operating system. Matter of fact, that hard drive would be useless without an operating system. It would just sit there. Our brain, cord, and peripheral nerves, that's our hardware. That's the stuff you can touch. You can measure it. You can actually damage it, just like I could pour water on this thing and damage my hard drive. You know, there's different ways that you could damage your nervous system. Well, my nervous system runs on an operating system called the autonomic nervous system. It's just like the software. So the software of this computer, it can get a virus and it can slow down. I can also throw in um, a little bit more RAM. I can clean out some viruses. I can optimize that operating system and it'll go faster and it can do more. Our operating system is just like that. It's got this slow side and it's got a fast side. The fast side is often called the sympathetic nervous system, and you may have heard the term fight or flight. Being in a fight flight state is when your autonomic nervous system has shifted to create some bodily changes. Uh, you might notice that your hands and feet get cold when you're in that moment. Some people might even feel like they're gonna pee their pants if they're really scared, because your body actually eliminates the input to your extremities to a certain extent in that moment to preserve core function. And so we make less efficient decisions when we're in a fight-flight state. You should never make a big decision when you're in, in a fear-based state. Conversely, there's this slow side to the autonomic nervous system and that's called the parasympathetic nervous system, commonly referred to as rest and digest. So you can now start to get an umbrella picture of these two different sides and see that, okay, if I don't have the capacity to rest and digest over here and I'm always in the fight flight state, I might end up with things like irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's, colitis, celiac. That's the type of individual that notices that their diet is becoming more and more limited because they're becoming more sensitive to things. They might notice that their blood pressure is elevating and they're needing more medication. They might notice that their relationships are breaking down because they're short with people and they're having a hard time communicating. That, that's all over here. Conversely, over here, you might find that you have chronically low blood pressure and you, when you go from laying to sitting or sitting to standing, you get dizzy and almost have to pass out or hold on to something you find that your muscle tone is less than adequate and you're a little bit clumsy. Uh, you might not be able to perform athletically like you would think you should or would like to. But you sleep really well. Matter of fact, you wanna sleep all the time. <laughs> so there's this balance that we need to keep and that balance is functionally optimizing your vagal nerve output. So that was the spiel on the autonomic nervous system and I'd like to kind of break it down into the various aspects of how it plays out on the vagal nerve. Now the vagal nerve in, well, in the word vagus in Latin or the vagal nerve is roughly translated into the wanderer in English. And that means that that nerve goes a lot of places. So some things that it does, and I'm telling you this because whatever it does, there's also an exercise for that spot that helps to strengthen it. So the vagus nerve helps to create tears 
So think lacrimal duct. It works on making saliva. So think moist mouth. It helps with taste, the lateral or the uh, posterior third of the tongue. It works with the twelfth cranial nerve, the glossopharyngeal nerve, for swallowing. In terms of differentiating the air going down the trachea versus food and water down the epiglottis. It even works with setting our heart rate and rhythm, oxygen and CO2 exchange in the lungs, and then it comes all the way down here to the digestive tract. It sets sphincter tone at the top and bottom of the stomach, makes the acid get released in the stomach, bile from the liver and gallbladder release of the bile, pancreatic enzymes, urinary function, gut motility, and sphincter tone on both ends. That's all one nerve. That's the vagal nerve. And it's regulated by this autonomic nervous system. So if somebody gets stuck in that fight-flight state, then all of this stuff changes. That's when people start to experience dry eyes, dry mouth, cold hands and feet, poor digestion, heart rate goes through the roof, and they aren't able to get oxygen into their body. So you can see how important it is to understand how to optimize this thing. And as I said, each of those spots can be tapped into as an exercise. You could actually stimulate your corneal blink reflex. You can sing. Singing is a wonderful task for the vagal nerve. You can hum and gargle. You can practice breathing exercises. One that we often teach people is slowly in through one nostril, block that side after and let it come out the other. Let it come back in and out the opposite side. So alternate breathing. Doing a Kegel exercise. Combining these things where you can use like a, a vibration type tool and you can put it on your chest and you can hum to it. One that I love is called the ResiMax. It's an incredible tool. We use it here all the time for a variety of purposes. Even remediation of some of the primitive reflexes. That's a whole other topic, but what a great tool for that. So you got vibration, you got singing, you got humming, you got um, reflex stem, uh, you've got Kegels, and then you could do them all at the same time. You, you could hum and gargle while you're doing a Kegel and you're working the top and bottom of your vagal nerve. The point is, there's a lot that we can do all throughout the day to help keep our nervous system functioning. And the more that we take responsibility for that and tap into it and recognize where our deficits might be and focus on strengthening those, the better our autonomic nervous system performs, the more balance we have, and the less we'll tend to fall into that fight-flight state and we'll be able to better optimize our rest and digest. So evaluate where you're at on that and tap into your functional medicine docs so they can help to guide you in this. There's so much that you can do to optimize your life. I hope that you find that information helpful and realize that it's simple tasks done daily that produce great results. Have a great day.